A Few Sanitary Suggestions From Vanity Fair, January 18, 1862 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Few Sanitary Suggestions an extremely amiable, agreeable friend of ours, who from his infancy has been subject to measles, whooping cough, nettle rash, croup, erysipelas, neuralgia, rheumatism, sciatica, jigger, lockjaw, chiego, shortness of breath, carbuncle, tetter, lumbago, pneumonia, delirium tremens, toothache, bronchitis, catarrh, salt room, chillblains, inverted nails, and depression of spirits, told us a few days ago that he had partially got over several of these little troubles by following some plain rules found by him in an excellent publication entitled Hall's Journal of Health. It has long been our opinion that the American people as a nation do not take sufficient care of their health. We are nationally, as all foreigners remark, addicted to reckless culture of muscle, regardless of the finer instincts which lead to the realization of large profits. There are but few of us who wear India rubber shoes, warm overcoats, and interior arrangements of flannel. Fewer still are those who carry umbrellas, and our houses and places of business are invariably regulated by thermometer to a maximum warmth of 60 degrees. We all gallop around on swift horses, box, fence, play single stick, kick footballs, climb greased poles, catch smelts, run foot races, indulge in rackets, swim, shoot, stalk deer, and cultivate other manly exercises, instead of sitting round stoves with cigars in our mouths, intensifying the idea of business. We are one big windship, in fact, and have been quite overdoing the muscle business, when we ought to have been cuddling ourselves up in warm dressing gowns and giving our minds to work. The day for that kind of thing is drawing to a close. Hall's Journal of Health is going to shut down upon it. Let us cull a few of the sanitary precepts from that valuable periodical. If we do not always give them in the exact words of the text, it is because we quote them partly from a memory to which they committed themselves unbidden. If we occasionally adulterate them with our own comments, it is because of our enthusiasm in the cause of humanity, of which the greatest blessing is health. Hall's Journal of Health has an intense and well-regulated objection to fresh air. In going into a colder air, says it, keep the mouth resolutely closed, that by compelling the air to pass circuitously through the nose and head, it may become warmed before it reaches the lungs. Also after skating, you are to walk home, or at least half a mile, with your mouth closed. The above direction is well meant, but incomplete, inasmuch as it does not contain any clause respecting the length of the nose. In cases where that member is of unusual length and circuitousness, it is well to plug the nostrils with preserved ginger, which keeps the air aired as it passes through them. Never, says Hall's Journal of Health, never put on a new boot or shoe in beginning a journey. As everybody travels on foot nowadays, the above is a very important rule, and should be observed strictly. Indeed, so convinced are we of its value, that we never think of wearing our boots and shoes until they are nearly worn out, whether we are going on a journey or not. Never, pursues Hall's Journal of Health, never sit for more than five minutes at a time with the back against the fire or stove. This is a good rule, and should be observed by all persons except those who have neither fires nor stoves. Persons who are so fortunate as to possess these articles would do well to avoid sitting on them for a longer time than that specified above. Avoid sitting against cushions in the backs of pews in churches, says Hall's Journal of Health. If the uncovered board feels cold, continues it, sit erect without touching it. We personally owe the remarkable straightness of our spinal column to the fact of our always having avoided sitting against cushions in the backs of pews in churches. Mind now, we say, in churches. In theatres and such other places, you may plant your back against cushions as much as you will, and come out all right and straight in time for oysters. Here is a fine, practical maxim, promulgated by Hall's Journal of Health. Never begin a journey until breakfast has been eaten. To this we have only one objection. 
Hall's Journal of Health neglects to instruct us by whom breakfast is to be eaten, whether by the careful person going to begin a journey, or by his horse, or by his dog, or by all three in banquet hall assembled, or by others. Upon skates, Hall's Journal of Health is particularly strong. If the thermometer is below thirty, says it, and the wind is blowing, no lady or child should be skating. We don't know about this. If the lady is below thirty and good-looking, let her skate thermometer or otherwise. If she is the reverse, let her slide. The following professional opinion of Hall's Journal of Health will collapse the flues of those foolish persons who imagine that the goddess Hygieia has an interest in Central Park lots. The grace, exercise, and healthfulness of skating on the ice can be had without any of its dangers by the use of skates with rollers attached, on common floors, better if covered with oilcloth. By doing this kind of thing you will keep your lungs inflated with plenty of good stale gas, which is wholesomer than fresh air, but do not neglect to cover yourself with oilcloth as directed. We think it is Hall's Journal of Health, but we are not sure which states that a cold may be caught by spilling a couple of spoonfuls of water upon one's clothing. There is a curious principle involved in this, and is the very same as that upon which a man may become thoroughly corned by placing a salt spoonful of salt upon the top of his head. It is to be hoped that our readers will follow carefully the precepts contained in Hall's Journal of Health. Thus doing, they cannot fail of becoming strong and handsome and good, though, of course, these conditions would be sooner attained by them if they could only be prevailed upon to wrap themselves permanently up in tissue paper and live in bandboxes. End of a Few Sanitary Suggestions Read by Leanne Howlett